Welcome to Photo Finds. I am your host, Kevin E, and this week we're going to get started with some merchandise. It's the Halloween season, now that Labor Day is beyond us, and as you can see, they've got several new, uh, as they always do, new lines of merchandise out. This particular photo is taken at, uh, at Mouse Gear, although you can find them at other parks as well. I enjoyed this little number, which has both the Mickey Pumpkins as well as the Haunted Mansion motif. That's the wallpaper. And in fact, the Haunted Mansion uh, kind of figures a little more prominently this year than usual. So you've got this, the busts and you've got the uh, the ghosts. That's the Hatbox ghost, uh, the Leota globe over here, and um, Jack Skellington, who is not from the Haunted Mansion, unless you're talking about Disneyland. Now these uh, crazy ghost guys you've um, probably seen over the last few years, they got their start at, at the other international uh, Disney parks, but they've become a little bit more common um, around the Orlando parks. I enjoyed this $22 item. I had to buy it myself. These are uh, miniature uh, tombstones, as though from the attraction Q. And this is uh, not, ho not uh, Halloween related, uh, but these are vinyl mations of note for Epcot historians. These are um, from uh, food rocks. So you've got things like uh, veggie veggie fruit fruit and uh, the Bonnie Appetit and so forth. Um, an interesting little historical detail. Now over to the land pavilion where they've given a haircut to all the foliage. Actually I think they've installed new foliage here. Instead of being a bit of an overgrown uh, jungle right in the front, it's now kind of neatly trimmed. And ever since the um, strategic alliance with Chiquita and uh, Fresh Express, their line of products, this happened in July, uh, the little signs have appeared now in Living with the Land that they're sponsored by Live, um, Fresh Express. And then this little number, which is a, a kind of spinning wheel uh, showing a different agricultural technique, is not reflected in the narration, uh, but it is there in that last green room. Now just in that last green room is uh, this a conveyor belt which is meant for um, showing different hydroponic systems. Uh, this one has no plants on it and so uh, it appears to not be functional and it, apparently it's been that way for some weeks now. Over to the Imagination Pavilion, this is the entrance where the red carpet here is new. That was um, just bare floor. You can see some of the floor is still here. Uh, it was just bare floor until uh, recently, so now the red carpet is new, as is this second, wall, um, second walkway and a wall separating them. Now there's no reason for having two lines, because right after this wall, it turns into a single line, but this does uh, give me the suspicion that maybe we're going to head towards a Fast Pass Plus kind of option here. Nothing unusual about this photo except this is the, the moment where the walls come down and I was just struck by um, uh, Dr. Nigel Channing's face in that particular shot. Over to Canada Pavilion where here's that construction we've seen over the last couple of weeks and we'll take another look at it from the reverse angle here. Uh, again, this has been rumored to be a DVC location. Back at the World Showcase and Future World intersection um, where you've got those two little gift shops. Above the ivy, they until recently in this area here had kind of bug clickers. They would uh, make audible noises to keep the bugs away, but they appear to have removed those. And the bridge to Future World, uh, this was the water feature, kind of a water playground for kids, currently behind um, those construction walls. Now at Mission Space, um, you've probably seen the Horizons logo before and the giant spinning wheel, except the wheel is presently not spinning. No word on how long that lasts. And a friend pointed this out, um, thanks to Paul for noticing this. This is the very first opening sequence of the ride in Mission Space itself, and I have never noticed the hidden Mickeys before until Paul pointed them out to me, and now I'll never unsee them. And so I returned the favor to Paul. I showed him the moon base, which he had never seen before. This is as we're transitioning under the moon. You can see the base here. It's not going to be uh, very high detail, but it's uh, something to watch for the next time you're on that ride. And a little bit more construction just outside of Mission Space. Now this is uh, one shot I haven't shown you from the um, Mexico Pyramid. This is just inside the Mexico Pavilion where the uh, giant Aztec calendar has taken over what was an empty spot previously. Over to Downtown Disney, you can see that the construction continues on Rainforest Cafe's uh, volcano there. And then a look at Splitsville, which has lost the scaffolding at the very top, but if you look inside, and there are times you can catch a glimpse inside through the, the scaffolding, they have not done much work inside. There are weeks and weeks to go until that thing is ready to open. Now we're here because there's something new right next to Bongo's, which is on our left, in the form of Phineas and Ferb and you. A brand new reality, it's called. And so we'll take a look at the other side. This is meant for the line, I think. When the people go inside here, what happens is they see themselves 
put up on the big screen in the back as well as animated characters doing pre-recorded things so you and the character interact together and uh, presumably they're there to sell you the video this is the entrance into the TTC, the walk over from the parking lot. They've got a trench kind of dug over on the side here, probably access for some kind of piping. And since we're on the monorails, let's take a trip around. This is next to the Grand Floridian, and as you can see, they're building something, uh, a playground feature here, themed to uh, the Mad Hatter. And right next to that, the construction, which has been going on for some time, still unannounced, it's the DVC for Grand Floridian couple different angles to show you of that uh, construction. So let's step into the Magic Kingdom and you'll see they're now advertising for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party and the pumpkin decorations have kind of taken over around the park in lots of fall and interesting um, foliage choices as well as the scary pumpkin scarecrows that they um, traditionally have in Town Square and the bunting elsewhere around Main Street. They've always got these little pumpkins. They're kind of neat with their decorations. I kind of wonder what this one was. It looks like it just might be broken, or maybe that's a Mickey Mouse bat. I don't know. But I did like the um, Jack Skellington key here seen on this artificial pumpkin. Now, with that setup comes some of the, uh, the setup for the Halloween parties themselves, such as this candy trail, which is returning to this location. Formerly, it was Toontown. Uh, and then you would be dumped out over in the Tomorrowland side and you'd have to go all the way around if you wanted to come back for more candy. But that made the, the meant that they were giving out higher volumes of candy when you were actually on the trail. Apologies for the blurry shot. This is inside Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin where a new wall has been added which um, partially separates the Fast Pass that's on this side from the standby line on this side and there's the merge point. And it's always been there. There's nothing different about the way the line works but the wall is new. Here we have um, some light poles, as you see, and then a spot where a light pole used to be and a couple of shrubs covering it up. It looks like the sort of thing that might have happened. Third shift, maybe a truck ran over something. Now, uh, people have noted this for some time. The waffles in the Sleepy Hollow refreshments now come with fruit and Nutella, or they come with um, the spicy chicken. And I didn't get a chance to try them until very recently, and I would recommend both of them very much. They were excellent. Of course, uh, it does lead one to wonder exactly where we are when we're eating this because the table is unthemed, the cups are unthemed, the napkins are unthemed. Maybe go out and take a couple more pictures of now the unthemed trash cans in the area. And yeah, even the strollers are not very well themed. There's a little bit of a brave advertisement here. Otherwise, they're not themed. They're straight from the manufacturer. That got me depressed, so I went out and found uh, uh, another tribute that I've not noticed before. There are no artificial um, and accidental 71s throughout the park. Magic Kingdom opened in 1971, so anytime you see a 71, you know that uh, this is a little piece of hidden history that they're nodding to their own past. And I've not seen this sign before. I've seen it, but I've not notably noticed the 71 tribute. This is near uh, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom portal. Now the FastPass Plus uh, machinery continues to proliferate. Here you see it at the front of the Big Thunder Mountain line, and then again at the merge point, it's still covered up uh, at the moment. The cast member is looking at um, manual things, manual pieces of paper. So once we get on the ride, there's a, a, a fairly significant light pollution. I, I flipped around quickly and took a picture of this after we passed it. This is in the back cave at the beginning, and um, this light is shining directly on some of the swinging bats on their, on their lines supporting them, really quite ruining the illusion. So I'm not sure what was up with this, um, what this device even is uh, and why it's necessary, but I hope they close that light leak. Here's something new. A sign over by Splash Mountain has always been here, but there used to be other signs in between. And one of those signs pointed to the Haunted Mansion, um, though it had the caption Rat Bee Mansion, which made no sense particularly. So it looks like they finally removed that sign after years and years of being there. A little bit more construction. This is the Crow's Nest up the road on the way to Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, back over in the Central Plaza, this is the former Swan Boat Dock, uh, now under wraps, probably just for... Um, keeping things fresh. Nothing new in this, but uh, I was here and got to take a photo without any people in it. This is the up ramp from Pirates of the Caribbean, where for years now they've had the peg leg paint, as though someone with one foot and one peg were walking up the escalator. Neat little uh, detail I thought I would just point out since we were here. 
Now this is the former Skyway area of Fantasyland, and as you'll see, we'll take a trip a little bit closer in. They've got several things under construction here. This is rumored to be um, the uh, the location for not only uh, new bathrooms, but a tangled meet and greet. And so you can see some of the wiring that will happen underneath the rock work when it's finished. Over to the Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster, where they've continued to add more to the outside structure here, as well as the the shade cover, the covering, I guess, starting to look a little bit like the uh, the Jurassic Park building in Universal. And that back castle wall is looking um, more and more finished, although there are some finer details needing to happen still in those turrets. Let's take a super close-up look at the um, the background of the area where you see they've implanted some um, fake artificial grass and they've got some space to plant some more so they're not done with that project. looks good what they have so far. There are those spots that still need some work done on the turrets. Now when we poke our camera up high a little bit we can see in a little bit over the wall enough to see that they've got um, different labels almost for these arches as if these arches go to different directions and let's take a closer look at one of them that's the Sleeping Beauty motifs and another one these are Snow White motifs and then kind of around the corner from there more closer to the bathroom side we've got another set of arches and two more um, two more of these crests so uh, there's one with uh, Beauty and the Beast and the Rose and there's one for Ariel and the Little Mermaid couple more views of both the Seven Dwarfs construction and the, uh, the turrets. It's remarkable how if you move around Fantasyland you get a different perspective. So from this angle the uh, Seven Dwarfs coaster is straight back from the from the turrets but that's not really normally the case. If you move to the right a little bit you'll see that the, um, the uh, Little Mermaid attraction under the sea will be straight back. And here's a view of under the sea now with more palm trees added and then there's that grass, artificial grass in the background it's looking more and more like that uh, model we see in One Man's Dream at Hollywood Studios. Again with the turrets and this time with the Beast Castle in the background it's really quite a photogenic area to take pictures in. Now we're moving over to Storybook Circus where uh, this blue tent the last time I was here did not yet have this sign about Big Top Souvenirs, a closer look in a second. In the meantime I have no idea what this is all about but it's uh, apparently a little bit more of a support structure for a sign maybe. There's that closer look at the Big Top Souvenirs sign. And then over to the yellow tent in the back which um, still has no name, hasn't been announced exactly what it's for. Now over to Carousel of Progress where we brought a zoom lens with us and this is in the first scene where our host is reading a newspaper and I've not really looked at this under a close-up before. The newspaper appears to say something like prank illustrations. So it was the prank that caught my eye. I had not noticed that before and it's just something I thought I'd point out. I have noticed this before. This is flight 1401. This is in the bulletin board in the very last scene. Sorry, the dry erase board in the last scene. 1401, of course, is the address for Walt Disney Imagineering in Glendale. It's on flower. And then nearby, another thing I have previously seen, it says Marty called wants changes. Marty being Marty Sklar, then head of Walt Disney Imagineering when this ride was constructed. Though, of course, you used to be able to see Marty called wants changes. What is new is that this picture now covers up part of Marty called. And still from that same scene, a uh, somewhat famous Mickey Nutcracker, one of the hidden Mickeys in the attraction. Uh, and then still a little bit more Disney history. This is the Sorcerer Mickey kind of motif, also in that same scene, and the China over the top. Now, Magic Memories and You ended its run on Monday night at Labor Day, and they had some Night of Joy construction going on, so obscuring the view a little bit. Uh, this show will be replaced in a, in a few months. They haven't said exactly when and exactly with what, although apparently there will not be guest photos in it anymore. So on our way out the Magic Kingdom, I've uh, not seen this done before where they're um, encouraging people to run underneath it as they lift it up. Um, but that does it for us as it does it for the Magic Kingdom. And as the pumpkins say, we will see you real soon. Thanks again for checking in. And again, we'll have um, further coverage on this Epcot First 30 Years book that um, Jeff Lang and I have put together and we'll be selling uh, very shortly in September. You'll get a fuller accounting of that. Um, at a future update and so we'll, uh, we'll let you know more about what's involved with this historical book. It'll be on sale uh, in both Amazon and Kindle. Thanks for checking in. We'll catch you next time.